the Lono Flow Barefoot Shoe. So three things to like with this shoe. Number one, if you like booty style shoes that feel very sock-like on the foot, this model is gonna feel right at home for your ass to needs. This shoe has a lower volume midfoot and forefoot, so it hugs the foot really well. And then also with this booty style construction, the top of the tongue here doesn't really dig into the top of the foot like the Primus Light Knit. And we also have a little bit of a flared material back here, which I like because it's kind of a tasteful touch to help mitigate any form of rub. So if you do like that sock-like fitting barefoot shoe, this shoe should work really well for your needs. The second thing to like with this model is it's a a good shoe for casual use and then also some training. So in the context of casual use, you're going to want to use this shoe in warmer and drier climates. So if you live somewhere like Miami, Austin, Texas, Southern California, basically anywhere that's a little bit more warm, I think you'll appreciate this shoe. There's a nice level of breathability through this mesh and knit upper and the materials used in this model. So it's definitely more of a warm weather bias model. And in the context of training, the shoe works for lifting and some cross training and then also some short runs. Now, when it comes to lifting, this model is gonna be great for more static work. If you're planning to use a barefoot shoe for cleans, snatches, etc., I would say pass on this shoe. And I'll talk about that soon in my cons. And then also when it comes to cross training, if you're doing a lot of multi-directional work or digging into the forefoot and doing a lot of agility work and cuts and whatnot, you might also want to pass on this shoe. And I'll also talk about that in one second. But overall, this shoe has done a pretty good job for most of my training needs. There will just be some thresholds with it. The third pro with this model is they use more biodegradable materials. So if you are big on the materials using your barefoot shoe, that's a perk of this model and the fact that they don't wreck you with their pricing this model costs around $76 I think is also a perk there so you're not only getting more biodegradable materials if that's something you really care about and you're conscious of but you're also getting a shoe that's not going to cost an arm and a leg which other models in the market that do use more recycled materials can tend to cost but all that said, let's talk about a couple of cons that I have with the Flow. So three cons that I have with the Lono Flow is number one, I don't necessarily love this like asymmetrical lacing system. So essentially with the laces here, and they're kind of similar to the laces used in the Lane 8 and the structure that they use for their eyelets, but what I noticed is that because we don't have a lacing system that sits in the middle of the shoe, this kind of overhangs at times and I don't necessarily love the appearance of it. So if you're very OCD like myself or similar there, that might be something that irks you because you can't really leave this just single looped. You will have these bunny ears start to hang over. So it's one of those little quality of life things that I'm not necessarily a big fan of with the shoe. The second con that I have with this model is for training, this model will have some thresholds to keep in mind. You're gonna have a little bit of spillover in my opinion if you're doing really harsh lateral work. So if you're doing skater strides, any form of agility and cutting on turf and whatnot, this upper, because it's a little bit more stretchy and breathable and lightweight, it's not going to give you the most security. That's usually a give and take with uppers like this. Great for some things, but they will have some performance thresholds in the gym. Also with this boot, because it is lighter as well, we don't really have any form of structure and cut back here. I was feeling like I was moving a little bit when doing sled pushes. So when I was digging in, I felt my heel moving a little bit. So another context where the shoe's performance thresholds will be a little bit limited. The third con with this model, and this isn't really necessarily a major knock against the shoe because they mentioned this on the product page, but this is not going to be a four season barefoot shoe in my opinion. Also, if you live in a very damp climate, be very conscious of wearing the shoe out and about because we have more of these like suede-ish overlays around the forefoot and the midfoot here. And then we have this very breathable upper. It's not gonna give your foot the most warmth, but also these materials can absorb water at times and they tend to get dirty pretty fast. Like as you can see, my pair is pretty dang dirty and I've been trying to be very conscious of the settings I'm using them in. So just food for thought there, this is not necessarily going to be the bomb proof barefoot shoe for wearing out and about winter, fall, rain, etc. So keep that in mind before you invest in this shoe. They do mention it though, so I don't really want to knock this shoe entirely for that because it's not really built for that, but I do want to make it known in this review. But now let's talk about the performance of the Lono Flow. To break down the performance of the Lono Flow, I'll discuss how the shoe does for lifting, cross training, short runs, and daily wear. In the context of lifting, the shoe has done a really good job for my static strength days and my hypertrophy days. So if you're going to the gym to do some lower body days, so let's say doing trap bar, deadlift, squats, whatever, or you're doing any form of machine work, this model should should work for your needs. I like the level of articulation you get with the shoe. The rubber outsole grips really well, and you can take this insole out to get even closer to the ground. So this model kind of ticks all of the boxes you want of a good barefoot shoe in the context of more static strength work. The only areas where I think this shoe can fall short for lifting at times is if you're doing super heavy dynamic single leg work. You might not love the security that you get with this shoe. And then also 
If you're using barefoot shoes for snatches and clean and jerks or just power cleans, what I was noticing as well is having a bit of spill over here, which I mentioned in my cons for my cross training section. So those are a few lifting contexts where the shoe can fall short at times. I think for most folks though, who aren't super specific with their training and their strength work though, this model will be plenty fine for your needs. When it comes to cross training, I like this shoe. It feels very athletic and the upper is very comfortable. This is also a model you can rock with or without socks and it's gonna feel comfortable too. My only gripes with this shoe for cross training is once again the upper security. I think you will have some caps in what you can do with this shoe, but for most folks who want this model for some kettlebell work, some kettlebell flow work, some flow work when it comes to mobility, or even doing lighter plyos and some lighter sled work, this model can be great. You're gonna like the grip, I think, in the outsole, and for the most part, the shoe should do a pretty good job delivering for that context. And then when it comes to short runs, this model kind of reminded me of the Vivo Barefoot Geo Racer Knit in the sense that the upper isn't incredibly secure and rigid, but it's enough to where you can run in them. Now, would this be my go-to shoe for sprints or super long runs barefoot? Probably not. And for the sprint context, I don't love the security. I want a shoe that's a little bit more rigid on my foot, so I know I'm not gonna have any issues when it comes to driving to that forefoot. And then when it comes to longer runs, you'll probably want something with a bit more structure as well. But for short runs and short interval runs, the shoe did a pretty good job and its comfort was great. And honestly, I love the breathability of this shoe. Feels very similar to models like the Geo Racer Knit in the context of the upper and the tier drop zero. And then chatting on daily wear, I like this shoe for the most part, but there are a couple of gripes I have with it. What I like about this shoe is its feel on the foot. I could rock it barefoot. I could leave the insole in if I want more cushion. Also, it has a lot of breathability. The upper is very comfortable in this shoe. I also like that you can leave these laces a little bit looser and just kind of slip it on and off, and you don't really have to worry about security for daily wear there. Now, my gripes with this model for daily wear is number one, it's not gonna be your best all season shoe. Number two, it can get dirty pretty dang fast. And then number three, with the asymmetric lacing system, I just feel like it kind of takes away from the appearance of this shoe. I know it's a minor gripe, but like, it just irks me. When I look down at my feet, I don't love that this thing is hanging off to the medial side of each of my feet, but that's probably a little gripe and I might be in the minority there because a lot of people might not care about that. But it is something I noticed with daily wear that I was like, I don't know if I necessarily love this feature of this model. So when breaking down the price of the Lono Flow, you can expect to pay around $76. Honestly, I feel like that price point is really solid for this shoe. If you go into them understanding that they will have some limitations and you just want a shoe for training and warm weather use, $76 for this model I think is a pretty dang good steal, especially when you compare it to other barefoot shoes. And I do like the mission and the vibe of Lona. They have a pretty cool vibe and brand to them, so I also appreciate that as well for the price. All right, so let's answer the most important question, which is who should buy this shoe? Number one, if you are big on buying shoes or any type of apparel, where you're conscious of the materials used, that is where the shoe, I think, can excel. Number two, if you're somebody that wants a barefoot shoe for more mobility, casual cross training, and lifting focus workouts in the gym, and even some short runs and daily wear, this shoe will also excel in that context. And then number three, if you like more sock-like fitting barefoot shoes, or if you have a lower instep or lower volume foot, and you want a booty style shoe that's not gonna feel too loose with the upper, this can be a great option to look into. Now, who should pass on this shoe? Number one, if you are somebody needing a barefoot shoe for more serious lifting, cross training, or crossfit, pass on this model. Number two, if you have a high instep or very, very thick foot, you might find that the midfoot's a little bit too limiting for you. I don't think it's gonna be the biggest issue, but it is food for thought there since this is a bit more of a lower volume shoe. I'm not necessarily convinced that you're gonna have enough room in this model. And then number three, if you're somebody who lives in wet, damp, or if it's generally cooler where you live, you might wanna find a shoe that's a little bit more dialed for your needs. So when chatting on the sizing and fit of the Lono Flow, I think most athletes and lifters should be safe going true to size in this model. They fit plenty wide and the midfoot isn't super aggressive. Also, the length doesn't run especially long, so I think you should be safe going true to size. Use our sizing chart. This is a 43, I'm a size 10 men's. I have an E to double E with foot and a standard arch, and the shoe kind of fits like a glove. I do have a little bit of length up here at the toe box, but not enough to where I would feel comfortable sizing down in this model. So I think most folks, once again, true to size will be the right call. So when discussing the weight drop and insole in the Lono Flow for my size 10, AKA 43 size shoe here, we have a weight of 9.5. 0.05 ounces. 
The heel to toe drop in the shoe is zero millimeters and this model does have a thin foam removal insulate you could take out and there's a finished internal construction. All right, so now let's cover the construction of the Lono Flow. Up here on the toe box, we have a suede overlay. We also have a little bit of an extended outsole lip here on the medial side. Looking at the midfoot and the forefoot upper construction, we have a mesh and knit material. So it is very stretchy, it's very breathable. So as you can see, you could pretty much see my fingers through this when you stretch it out. Looking at the midfoot, you have three core eyelets that go up with suede overlays on the lateral and medial side of the shoe. The lacing system kind of reminds me of the Lane 8 models. Look into those shoes if you haven't because you'll see what I mean there with the lacing. We also have a suede overlay here in the midfoot serving as the main lace security system. The laces once again lay asymmetrically in this model. You cannot have them sitting in the middle because we have these loops in the midfoot. Looking at the boot of this shoe, you have some suede overlay that goes around the entirety of this boot and then you also have this lip here. This material is pretty soft. As you can see, there's a little bit of a flap that helps kind of mitigate any form of rub, which I personally like. It's a nice little touch with this shoe. Now I am curious when you're pulling this shoe on, be conscious of like kind of putting two fingers in and then slipping on versus pulling on this because it's a lighter material. I don't want you to rip that too soon or prematurely. Looking at the outsole in this shoe, you have a full rubber tread with lugs here. You also have the biodegrade tech in this shoe. So this shoe is designed to be a little bit more biodegradable than some of its peers on the market. And then once again, this model does have a thin foam removal insole that you could take out and there's a finished internal construction. If you have additional questions on the construction of the Lono Flow, drop a comment down below. All right, y'all, there's up my review of the Lono Flow. Now, would I get this shoe again? I would. However, I would go with a dark colorway. I don't love how fast this model gets dirty, and I also am wondering how fast the white model is going to get dirty because this suede up here attracts pretty much all dirt when wearing the shoe out and about and when training. So all that said, I would get the shoe again, but again, there are very specific use cases with this model where I think it's gonna feel right at home. It's not gonna be a barefoot shoe for everybody. If you have additional questions on this shoe, drop a comment down below or hit me on Instagram, whichever you prefer. And as always, y'all, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.